Hi, I'm Bryce. And I've been meditating regularly for the last eh, seven years or so. But recently I've decided to uh, expand my horizons and my meditation practice. Inspired by the various 30 days of meditation challenges, I decided to take this a step further. So every week I'm going to be practicing a different meditation technique, and only that meditation technique for every day that week, until starting a new technique the next week. A lot I didn't even know existed. So I wanted to share what I've been learning with all of you. This is going to be fun, we're all going to learn some stuff along the way. Hopefully. I guess I'm just realizing, but I'm a pale, pale man. You are not hallucinating. I did lose some weight on my face. And I am not a ghost. It may look like it on here, but I can assure you, I am not a ghost. This week's meditation is called Heart Rhythm Meditation, and it's something I have not tried of before or heard of until this year. So this is something completely new, something completely foreign to me, and I'm not entirely sure what or how this is going to go, considering I'm essentially going to be teaching myself how to do this meditation based on a few videos I've been watching on YouTube. The basic premise of heart rhythm meditation is very simple though. It's breathing in alignment with your heartbeat. This week was fraught with complications, uh, including a little bit of a rearrangement of travel plans and also uh, computer frying. And, um, It was a good week for, for meditation, to say the least. What you are supposed to do during this meditation is sit in a chair with your palms facing up. It's a nose breathing meditation. You don't open your mouth at all. And you keep your eyes closed. It also helps to either take your pulse here or here, or maybe place your hand on your heart so you can feel your heartbeat and that pulse. If I'm being fully transparent, I didn't meditate every day uh, with this meditation all at once. I did f five days in a row, and then I s stopped for two days, and then I did some other meditations to sort of relax and chill out, and then I resumed the heart rhythm. So, and then what you're supposed to do, after you've gotten a little bit focused on your heartbeat and if you can feel that, then you're supposed to inhale for six to eight heartbeats and then exhale for six to eight heartbeats. It sounds simple, but it's a little bit more challenging than one might think. Whereas instead of with other meditations, you count for a certain amount of time while you're breathing, um, with this meditation, you're using your heartbeat as the counting. It might seem easy to sort of uh, listen to your heartbeat, take your pulse as you're meditating, but it's harder. Connecting to your heart is no small, no small thing. A few times during this meditation, I actually cried. It was um, very cathartic, but at the same time, it, um, there was just something about connecting to my heart that was very deep, very, I don't know, it was something. And even though this meditation focuses more on breathing, there's a certain point when you're listening to your heart that uh, excuse me, excuse me. Now from my understanding and watching a couple other videos on YouTube about uh, heart rhythm meditation, there are a few other types of breathing 
exercises you can do within this meditation. However, I'm going to be sticking to the inhaling for six to eight heartbeats and then exhaling for six to eight heartbeats. I want to say it made me more conscious of my mortality. But it's something about listening to that beat that essentially is giving you life. It's a very delicate thing. I mean, I know it's like a really strong organ, but it's still delicate, this rhythm, because when I was listening to my heart, another thing, like when you listen to your breathing, and when you're paying attention to your breathing, especially how when uh, other people or situations are affecting you, like this past week when a lot of stuff was happening to me, I could you know, feel my breathing getting a little bit more heavy, a little bit more fast and quick. And when I was listening to the, my heart, listening to that, I could feel much more in tune with my heart. And I could feel my heart starting to raise faster. Now, I feel like Matthew McConaughey in that one movie. Whatever it is. Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street, that's what it is. It's a vulnerability there. And I hadn't felt with other meditations. When it comes to this vulnerability I'm speaking of, uh, two people come to my mind immediately because I have recently been listening to a few old interviews with these two people, and those two people are uh, Robin Williams and David Letterman, about their, uh, when they went through their uh, heart surgeries, and speaking about how vulnerable they felt uh, during and after their procedures a little bit. Robin Williams, in this interview I listened to with him, he made a good point saying something how vulnerable you are in those surgeries because the doctors, you know, they open up that cage that protects all of that. And so you're completely exposed. And while I haven't had the uh, pleasure or whatever of having open heart surgery or whatever, um, I understand what that, what he means when he says that, because there's just such a vulnerability here. This is the thing that gives you, empowers your whole body. This is the gas tank, so to speak. And um, when you connect to that, it's. Really powerful, you know. I'm not. I'm not Tarzan, but I feel like I'm hitting my chest an awful lot. I was surprised at the difficulty of it, being able to uh, inhale and exhale for a certain amount of heartbeats. A very key thing I learned about myself. I noticed that. I had no problem inhaling for the certain amount of heartbeats, maybe six, seven, eight, whatever. Um, but it was on the exhaling of my breath that I found myself struggling to exhale for the whole amount of heartbeats. Um, and there was definitely, for the most part during the week, I think I got it even. Um, a little bit, but for the most part, it, it was a little bit uneven in terms of being able to inhale for, let's say, seven heartbeats and exhale for seven heartbeats. I was lucky if I was able to exhale for five heartbeats. And that said something. That said that there was something about letting go. I think. Something about being able to let all the breath me go, or maybe it was, or, or it could be the reverse too, maybe I'm able to just shove everything out really quickly, and I need to be able to take my time with the exhale.
tail. Either way, there's definitely something in terms of uh, exhaling with this meditation that I learned about myself. It's very, it's very telling. Not to put a blanket statement on anything either, but I've noticed in some of the meditations I've done that are more breathing focused and not as much mental focused, um, I have a little bit more of a difficult time doing. Um, Vipassana, I can do it, but I notice it's uh, it can be a challenge or struggle sometimes. I'm not going to get too much into Vipassana now because that's something you'll learn about later. This will definitely come up again in later videos for sure. But until then, this is what I've learned. And um, yeah. I hope you. This is what I learned. Maybe you learned something too. Definitely. Uh, look, do more research on heart rhythm meditation. I think I put a few videos throughout the uh, throughout this video about heart rhythm meditation. But definitely uh do your own research especially because this wasn't a meditation i was familiar with at all in any way so um, i can only give you the basics and if this is something you think is might benefit you in some way definitely look up more information about this one.